students from the University of Limerick, Hala Jabber. Hi everybody, my name is Hala, and I come from Palestine, but specifically from a little town called Bethlehem. And I'm sure you've all heard about Bethlehem when you're singing Christmas carols. Now, Bethlehem is most spectacular town to be in. However, it's really surrounded by war and conflict. I grew up there, and my family's still there, and I go to visit. And it's really hard to be living in a place where it's conflict and war and shooting and bombing all day long. Now, as it is, growing up there was not easy. My nai, so this is my nai, this is my Arabic flute. And my music was my constant companion that helped me resituate myself, helped me refine who am I in the midst of all this chaos. Now, I studied music in Bethlehem first. Then I went to Syria, and I know this name is coming very familiar with all the news, and I continued my musical education in Syria before I came to Ireland. And I worked in Bethlehem and I worked in Syria with children and with adults in making music. Before I go on with my research and explaining what I'm doing now, I would like to share a little piece from my country. So this is my night, it's made out of bamboo. And I'm gonna share a little piece called Jada Al Ghaith, which is where we come from, we have really lack of rain. So this is a rain song. And I know the word Palestine or Syria are so far away and we cannot imagine them. So you can see on this map, it's a really long journey and it would take me two days actually to get home. Now, I'm lucky because I go to the airport and I take all my time in the world and pack in my bags, choosing what clothes I want to wear, what things I want to bring and flying and plane. But let's imagine for a second the unlucky people who take boats and who walk through Europe in sun, in snow, and in rain, looking for a safe space. Now, I'm sure that most of you have traveled on vacation, and let's just say, someone walks in and say, you got two hours, pack your bag. It's not a big luggage, just a small backpack. Put whatever you think is essential for you to survive. You're going on a journey, you have no clue how long, where it is, how's it gonna end, where are you gonna end in it? Now, what would you take? Would you take your iPhone, your tablet, your clothes, your medication, your pictures, your memories? So this journey, a lot of the refugees, and according to the UNRWA, there's about 65 million refugees around the world, and most of them are coming to Ireland, and newly with the Irish Resettlement Programme, more and more Syrian refugees are coming to resettle in Ireland. Now they come here, they have no idea of English, they don't know how to navigate themselves in the cities. They don't know what are they doing. They're lost. They're afraid. Do they belong here? Is this a destination? Is this another stop in their way? They go to school and they're like, okay, I don't understand what the teacher is saying. I don't understand what to do in my homework. How do I navigate this? So I want to introduce you to the Ibrahim's family. Now they're resettled in Limerick. Now, the Ibrahim's family, and they have posted their stories in the Limerick Leader. I know them personally, I've met them, I've chatted with them. They were in Aleppo, they're farmers in Aleppo, they had a shop. So they had a job and they had a life. There's other siblings, they're not in the picture, and they went to school, they had friends, it was all. Then ISIS came, and I think we all heard about ISIS. They came in, and this family had to run, had to leave their farm, their shop, 
everything and they had to run. Now, after a long journey, they ended up in Limerick. Now, it's true, they've been given a house, they've been given an education, they're learning English, but the first month, the first year, they're here in Ireland, what is happening? It's very difficult for them to go and try to go to Aldi or Lidl and try to buy groceries, because then the clerk tells them the number in English, and they're like, okay, what does that mean? This is a new currency. There's no sun. Syria and Palestine are full of sunshine. It's always raining here. People think it's, oh yeah, it's the nature, but it actually affects you because you're not used to these things. So you might ask, okay, great, this is their stories. What does music have to do with it? So I'm a community musician. And you see, community comes before music. So we're focusing on the, on the community within a musical context. Now, as I ask you, how many times were we sad or angry or happy and we just feel like one song from our favorite singer, one piece of music actually represents us, represents how we feel, and we don't have to say it to people. Just we play that song and that is how I feel today. So community music brings up people, and at the moment we're bringing refugees, asylum seekers, newcomers or migrants all together, and we're making music with them. We're giving them a safe space where they can express themselves, they can feel that they belong, they can feel that they're heard, they can feel that they're contributing to the community. And that's a very, very important word. When you've lost everything and you come to a new place where you cannot navigate yourself, and if you don't feel that you're contributing to this new place, you're gonna be really, really sad. So, it's the same in this small community can mimic the larger community. When you feel safe, when you feel like whatever my opinion is, whatever I want to say, I am being heard and it's okay. Then you will go to the outer community and say, I can say what I think because I am being heard. Now it's the same if you woke up today feeling a bit grumpy, then you went to school feeling a bit grumpy, then you're here feeling a bit grumpy. We all feel and our feelings stay with us. So this person who felt lost, they're settled, but they're unsettled. If we give them feelings of empowerment, if we make them feel that they belong, that they're here, that they can contribute to our society, that they can make a difference, that if they were doctors, engineers, teachers, farmers, carpenters, that they can help us build a new Irish community. And I know you say, okay, does this work? How do you know if it works? So this is Mustafa again, in the Irish World Cafe. So the Irish World Cafe is a little initiative that held on by University of Limerick and the Irish World Academy, that it's a safe space for everybody from any background in the world to come and share the music. So he's now here sharing his music and doing a lot of songs. Now imagine this, you go to a Starbucks, chill your favorite coffee, and you have a little platform for people to go and perform. It's the same thing. We offer teas and coffees and really light lunch, and everybody's welcome to come and play a little bit of music, express themselves, feel that they're important enough that their voice is being heard. And when we all accomplish this, then integration begins to happen. Then people start looking at people that they are, this is a person, it doesn't matter where they come from, it doesn't matter what they've been through, it doesn't matter their language, it doesn't matter their color, it doesn't matter their religion, it doesn't matter their beliefs, they're as human as I am. And then we can start build a better community. Now to end off with, I would like to show you a video of the Irish World Cafe where you listen to first Mustafa singing some Syrian songs, then a little bit of Irish music and Congolese music. <laughs>
Thank you very much, Halla. Panel, final set of questions. Hi, Halla, well done. Um, what kind of obstacles did you run into? I was just thinking of the, the World Cafe there, and you know, the real team of that is the mixture. You had the, mm -hmm. you know, from, from the various cultures, etc. What kind of obstacles do you feel you've run into in this? And I'd be kind of curious about how you feel you've overcome them. So um, one of the obstacles that we don't really think about, but it's very present, and I think everyone feels it, is when we are sharing something of ourselves, something of our culture and heritage, we're always feeling, would people actually accept it? Would people actually know and appreciate it, or would they judge me for it? So the first tip was kind of, the first obstacle was trying to break that and say, it doesn't matter what you bring, it's what you bring, and we accept that what you bring. So that was the first obstacle. And for me as well, when I was thinking of this presentation, to, to go and say, I'm playing a piece from my culture in the back of your head. Will they like it? Will they not? Will they judge you for it? So that is, and I think it's natural in all of us to feel that way. And that is the most obstacle that we're trying to break. Now, it's slowly happening. I don't say it's from the first. So this is our third year running the Irish World Cafe. So it's slowly building up. People are becoming more open. And what happens is we invited musicians the first time and these musicians told their friends. Then we collaborated with the West Limney and then new migrants are coming. So Mustafa, on the first time he came, he didn't sing. He sat and listened. Then the next time we asked him, oh, would you like to perform, sing a song? Then he's like, uh, okay. Then the third time and the fourth time he was like, oh yes, I will do. So I think it's gradual to building it up. Thank you. I just have two simple questions. The, uh, you're obviously making the, the point about um, people who are in forced migration situations and the, the difficulty they have in getting from A to B and all the, the obstacles they're going to face along the way. I was just wondering, do any of them that you've encountered, any of them bring, find space to bring a little a musical instrument such as a flute? But secondly, the other thing I wanted to ask, I just wanted to clarify about the world, the Irish World Cafe. Is that something that happens just within the confines of the World Academy of Music and Dance in the University of Limerick, or is it a wider community <coughs> cafe? Um, so for your first question, it's, I know um, I'm a, an asylum seeker, and he's a DJ. So he wrote what he could. Now, when traveling these circumstances, you can't, but whatever money he gets and whatever things he does, he does, and he saves up to buy more. And I know that Mustafa now actually bought a drum. He couldn't bring a drum with him, but now he bought a drum. So what they bring with them, and what we notice if they're not clothes or not necessity, is very small, symbolic things of their home. So I haven't encountered someone who got a really big instrument, but they try to get it here in Ireland. And for your second question, it is an initiative held by the University of Limerick and the Irish World Academy, but it's done outside, it's in the city, it's with Christ Church, so they offer us their art gallery. So as you've seen, there was a bus, so it's in the middle of the city, the doors are open. If you happen to walk by that day, you're very much welcome just, just to come in. Thank you very much, Hala. Um, it's, a, it's a terrific story, and as the son of... Uh, migrants, Irish migrants who grew up in Birmingham back in the 50s and 60s. I mean, we were dragged along to feshes and flowers and it was very much part of our cultural experience. And I'm just wondering if there's any learning from that because the Irish culture became very embedded. It was initially a source of identity, but now it's a major international force. Mm. And I was struck by the number of traditional musicians you had there. Do you think there's any lessons to be learned about the route that Ireland went on this, or the Irish diaspora? Well, I think in Ireland it's quite unique because people have experienced that. So you find them more welcoming to migrants because every, almost every Irish person I encountered had some family member who migrated or some family member who left Ireland. So there's kind of a bit of understanding, and I find, at least in the Limerick community where I I'm navigating that they're understanding that it's not easy. And I've, um, I've been to initiative that's been held by Irish people to make collaborations of music. Now, I think the lesson is to be lots of lessons, and it's a personal thing. 
of what people can learn. But I think openness and embraceness to others and people, because maybe 10 years from now, some Arabic music might be integrated into the Irish music, and you have a whole new brand to say Irish music, Irish Arabic music, Arabic music. It could be a whole genre coming up. So I think the lesson is just to have an open heart, an open mind, and embrace all kind of music. Okay, our final contestant is Hala. Okay, so for all of the students in the audience, uh, there are ballot papers being passed out among you at the moment with all five names of those who presented before you. Uh, you're also getting pens. You can take the pens home. What I also want you to do, folks, just your attention for one moment. As I mentioned, there are five prizes. So we're going to draw for those five prizes just on the ballot paper, on the back of the ballot paper, put your name and your school, uh, and we will draw for those prizes. But of the five, which of the five do you think made the most impact? Uh, we had a great journey today. We went from rugby to music. We experienced nature laws. We talked about Huntington's disease, and we dealt with barnacles. So there's five stories. Just pick one. Our panel will also now go away. They're going to pick who they think made the most impact. And once you've filled in your ballot paper, please hold up your ballot paper and one of our team will collect it so that they can count it. Don't forget, if you want to go in the draw, put your name and school on the back of the ballot paper. And folks, once you've handed up the ballot paper, we will have another 10-minute break. Then please come back in here for the results.